Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at the Akidio Node. This is a uh, external graphics card box. It looks like a PC, but actually all it does is houses an NVIDIA or AMD GPU. And what you do with this thing is you connect it up via Thunderbolt to a laptop like this one here from Lenovo that we reviewed a couple of days ago. Uh, so it has a Thunderbolt connector right here and uh, you can pop it in there and then you get actual desktop level graphics performance out of a little laptop with a rather large box plugged into it. We're going to explore how this works here in just a second, but I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. Now before we get into the overall hardware configuration, I do want to give you a little warning about Thunderbolt and how all this works, because even though your computer might have a USB Type-C port, it is not a Thunderbolt port, even though they use the same connector. So uh, this port on this little Lenovo here is a Thunderbolt port because it has the little icon next to it indicating that it is. Uh, this port here is just the USB Type-C connector. Uh, many laptops, especially ones that are in the five dollars or $600 range, have USB Type-C, but they are not Thunderbolt enabled. So you can get this thing, it'll plug in, but it's not going to work. Thunderbolt 3 is required. It will work with older versions of Thunderbolt as well, which we'll explore in uh, future videos. You can get an adapter to uh, make it work, but it will not perform as well as what you're going to see here. Now, even if you have the Thunderbolt port, it may not perform as well as another computer with that same port because different manufacturers configure these things in different ways. And uh, you definitely should do some research up front to make sure your laptop has everything you need to make it all work before you take the plunge here. So there's a great website called eGPU.io that I suggest checking out before you embark on this adventure. Adventure. They have a great message board where people can uh, ask questions and you can certainly search through their, through their archives to see if you have any issues that others have experienced before. They also have a really nice hardware database of different computers and eGPU configurations so you can see uh, exactly whether or not the computer you have is going to work uh, as well as what you're about to see here with this Lenovo. So I think a lot of the newer KB Lake machines are going to do better uh, perhaps than the Skylake machines uh, were doing about a year and a half ago when, when Thunderbolt 3 really first came out. Now my MacBook Pro 15 also worked very well, uh, but I've only tested it so far in Windows. And I think for right now, uh, I'm not going to recommend this for Mac users just because the software on the Mac doesn't really take advantage of NVIDIA GPUs, for example. There are some beta drivers now to get the new uh, 1080, 1070, 1060 cards working, but it's still not completely uh, baked yet. And a lot of the software that I use doesn't really uh, benefit from that optimization. But if you do have a Mac, I would suggest booting it up into Windows with Boot Camp or using my external uh, Windows to go example that I did a few months ago on the channel. I'll put a link to that video down below and boot your Mac into Windows because if you're doing this to play games, those games are going to run better in Windows on the same hardware anyhow than they would uh, on the Mac. Let's take a closer look now at the hardware. Let me pop open the uh, case here. It's a little hard to get at this thing because it's really, um, it's, it's basic transportation here. This is like a, a computer case that you might have bought in the 90s kind of, kind of uh, styling here. So uh, rather large, it is as heavy as it looks. Um, but it is relatively easy to get at. Now, what I did with mine is I installed a PNY GTX 1070 card. This was the fastest card I had in my repertoire in my uh, back room there. And uh, in full disclosure, PNY provided this to the channel free of charge a while back, and I use it from time to time on uh, videos like this. Also, by the way, the Yoga 720 here from Lenovo is on loan from them. It will be going back when we are uh, done playing with uh, this project very soon. So uh, what this is really is just an expansion card. It's got a PCI Express slot in here. This is a uh, X16. The card fits in just like it would on a uh, traditional motherboard. And part of the reason why this box is so big is because it needs to be. Look at the size of the card. Uh, this is why it's so hard to get a small laptop with a powerful GPU. This is how big these things are right now, especially because of all the cooling that has to go on there. Uh, the case is, again, pretty Spartan, but uh, they were smart enough to uh, at least give you some uh, venting here so the fans are not just blowing into the side of the case. They will be blowing out that side. Uh, you've got a fan on the back, and there's also a fan on the side for its 400-watt power supply. Now this costs about $279 give or take, so it's under $300 for the box itself. Uh, that's what I bought, and then uh, you can uh, you know, obviously find the best GPU that you may want to put into your device. So this particular one costs about $380, but you could go to a 1060 or something less than that if you want. Uh, so you can really put just about any GPU in here. And really, uh, this becomes a uh, external PCI Express slot that you can plug into your laptop. So other cards presumably should work as well. I haven't tested any, but maybe capture cards and that kind of stuff should uh, probably work too if you really want to you know, go <laughs> for some huge <laughs> external enclosure 
versus a uh, USB-based device or something else. Uh, so on the back here, we've got the, uh, the card's outputs, and uh, we're going to be plugging our display into the HDMI on the back here. Now, what you'll see in the uh, course of reviewing the product here is that we can actually have the video pipe back through the laptop display, but there's a performance hit for it. So my suggestion would be uh, make sure that your uh, video is running directly out of the card to your display. So if you are uh, looking at this like as a college dorm room thing, it, almost think of this as almost like a docking station that only <laughs> just has video on it. Uh, the Thunderbolt connector is here. It's a very small cable, identical to the USB Type-C connector. And then here's the switch for the power, and that is all there is to it. It isn't that loud when it's powered up, it really sounds about what a, a desktop gaming PC would sound like, and then obviously your graphics card's noise will uh, impact that a little bit, but this one's pretty quiet and it seems to be working pretty well. You also get the right power connectors in the box here too, so uh, the, the connector for the graphics card is uh, built into the power supply. There's an extra one here if you've got a very power-hungry card, so you can certainly expand it out from there. So that is all there is uh, for the hardware. So what I'm going to do now is get everything set up here on the desk and show you how it all works. Now the math works out to about 32 gigabits per second coming over this wire. Thunderbolt 3 theoretically supports up to 40. The problem is that uh, to get that high speed, you have a very short cable. I think this is actually the maximum cable length that uh, is supported by this technology. So uh, you will have to keep this very close to your laptop. There really isn't an extension cable you can get just yet. Maybe they'll have some kind of fiber optic thing down the road, but uh, right now you get to deal with this very short cable. And really, this was my experience. I just plugged it in uh, and everything just kind of came to life here. It might not come up right away here. It may take a second or two for everything to spring up, but uh, what will happen here is the uh, eGPU kicks on, the fan goes off here, the display changes, and now uh, we see that our uh, external display is now working. And uh, we are essentially now running off that GPU because we are, again, connected via HDMI uh, directly to this monitor here. So really simple here, plug and play. Now, when I did get it installed the first time, I had to go out to NVIDIA's website and download the drivers for the GPU. And I did a full video uh, on this whole process. It was a live stream. I'm going to be chopping that video up and uploading it to my Extras channel, hopefully around the same time that you see this review. So you can go there and actually see all the steps that I took uh, to get it working with this yoga laptop. But I was surprised that it really wasn't that hard. It was literally plug and play. Uh, plugged it in, got the drivers, and uh, we were ready to go with this. And you can see here we're already going. Now, uh, what happened right here, because I had it configured this way before, is that uh, the internal display is off here on the laptop. So I'll zoom back in. Uh, maybe we'll get that display uh, redirected over. And I'm doing that just through the uh, Windows settings here. So I'll just go over to our settings and uh, just make it so that it'll, it will mirror the display on both uh, so we can see uh, what the, it'll look like when we're playing games just on the laptop display here. So now we've got it going on uh, both displays. And again, this is the GPU powering this, not the internal Intel graphics. So let's take a look at some games that might push this graphics processor a little bit. And you'll recall when we did our yoga review, we looked at how Rocket League ran just on the Intel hardware with all the settings kind of turned down. We were basically getting by with about 30 or 40 frames per second. So now we've got uh, everything here turned up to the maximum display quality, as you can see. Uh, and we'll see how it performs now. So we're getting uh, almost similar frame rates here, but we're running at uh, full quality versus not. So we're using that GPU now to uh, really dramatically improve the image quality here. And the laptop display looks great, so that really helps uh, make this look a lot better too. But it's not as quick as it could be, again, because uh, we're using some of the data on the wire here to uh, bring over uh, the display back into the computer in addition to doing all of the things that the graphics card needs to do. So let's turn off that internal display and see what kind of performance we get now. All right, so we disabled the laptop's internal display just by using the Windows display settings. I had it go uh, only to display on display number two, and that uh, disabled the internal display. And if we go back into Rocket League here, you can see our settings are identical uh, to what we had before. And by the way, if the image looks a little washed out, it's a, a scaler that I'm using here to get this over to my video system in real time. Uh, but as you can see here, it runs a lot smoother than it did before because we're not uh, using up some of that cable bandwidth for running display over to the laptop's display. We're just pushing it all out of the HDMI and not uh, running any more digital information through the cable here. So there's really a lot of uh, bandwidth on this cable, but you can see just how much bandwidth it takes to power that GPU. So we do get a nice performance boost here and uh, some really good frame rates here as we're playing.
playing uh, this at full settings on a laptop running with an i5 processor. It's an i5-7200U uh, CPU inside, but it really uh, is performing quite well here. Now, I did want to share with you some benchmarks that I ran, and then we'll look at a few other games. Uh, the first one I want to share is the difference between using a display on the laptop and then just using the external display exclusively. And I ran the 3 d Mark Time Spy benchmark, and you can see that without the internal display enabled, we got a score of 4,039 versus 3,401 with that internal display enabled. So a pretty big jump here. I would focus on the graphics test, test one and two, uh, because we got 34 frames per second on that test without the internal display on, uh, with it on 27 frames per second. So we're seeing about a 25% graphical performance increase by turning off the internal display. So that is my recommendation, and many other people recommend the same. Uh, plug that monitor directly into the back of this and then kill your uh, internal display display when you are plugged in uh, and docked. Now you're probably curious, how does this compare to a desktop computer with a GPU installed on it? And lucky for us, we've done a few tests with GTX 1070 GPUs. In fact, the same card that is in here uh, was one that we used on our PC build over the holiday season. And uh, surprisingly, the results are very similar. So check out our benchmarks again on the Time Spy test here. 34 frames per second on the first test on the Yoga here with the external 1070 GPU, uh, 31 on the second test. Uh, that i3 build that we did uh, was very similar, 38 frames per second on the first test and 34 or thereabouts on the second test, so almost identical. Uh, we're also seeing very identical scores on the Lenovo uh, Y710 Cube that I reviewed a few weeks ago as well. That was a compact gaming PC. Again, very similar frame rates on uh, those first two graphics tests. The scores are varied because uh, each of these has different CPUs. So the i5 dual core 7200U, it's a little low powered laptop processor in here, is not going to be as fast as a desktop processor would be, for example. So you'll see better frame rates on the physics portions of those tests, but uh, graphics is what we're wor worried about here because it's really a matter of how much data can be pushed over to this external device, and it appears as though it's able to give it what it needs to perform uh, up to par versus a desktop computer, which was very impressive to see. Now, I do want to make a comment about fan noise because you're probably hearing it right now on my microphone. Part of the problem is that I have to have everything so close together uh, because of this cable. So I don't think the noise is any louder than a gaming PC might be, but typically you'd have your gaming PC on the floor, and uh, there's certainly some issue here with the proximity making it louder than it might otherwise be. My suggestion would be to take the computer and the box here, uh, put them on the floor or locate them somewhere a ways away, and then run a long HDMI cable out the back of this, as well as longer uh, USB cables out the side of the computer so you can uh, limit the fan noise a little bit. But this, again, is kind of a Spartan utilitarian design, and it works, but uh, you will hear a little bit of fan noise, and you, you have some limitations as to where you can place it uh, based on the cable length. All right, so let's take a look at a couple more games here. We've got Grand Theft Auto V running, and I initially started with the uh, GeForce Experience settings. I think I'm pretty close to where they were at, but I wanted to tweak the image quality a little bit to make it look a little nicer. So uh, you can see what I have set up over here. A lot of high settings on all this stuff here, and uh, we'll go through that, and uh, we'll check out the advanced graphics settings so you can see what I did there, and we'll back out to the game itself. And it looks great, and we're running at about 45 frames per second or so at 1080p. And of course, I could get this up to 60 if I turn more of those settings down, I am sure, but uh, this gives you an idea as to what you can do with this thing. You can really get a much better visual experience with your games. And as we saw when we reviewed the Y720, it was barely able to uh, get by at 1080p uh, with its internal Intel graphics with the game really uh, muddied up. So this is a huge improvement, being able to just come home and plug into your GPU and start playing a game on the same laptop that you were carrying around with you a little bit earlier. Really cool stuff. So that is uh, GTA 5, and again, a pretty good frame rate here. We're looking at about 42 right now, and you know, it varies just based on what's going on in the scene in this game because of the processor requirements also, but uh, generally a really nice looking and very playable experience here. All right, so now let's check out Doom. And there was one issue that I've seen with this game that might be something you will experience in other games as well, and that it looks like it's locked up here. But if I uh, do the, the three finger salute here, Control Alt Delete, uh, click, click Cancel here, and then jump back into the game, suddenly it starts working again. So there are a couple little uh, glitches here or there that you might encounter. This could just very well be a uh, driver issue on uh, NVIDIA's side, but something to keep in mind that you might have some weirdness occasionally popping up. This is the only game so far that I've seen do this, but it's something that you should be aware of nonetheless. So here we are in the game. I'm going to show you my graphic settings before I uh, jump in and start getting my butt kicked by the aliens. Uh, so we'll go over here to settings and 
over to the advanced video settings. Again, we're at 1080p and you can see uh, what I have set up here. Uh, and again, we're just using that 1070 GPU versus the onboard GPU, which could barely get the game running at 720p. So here you are, really good looking game, very fast game as you can see. We're hovering uh, in almost 125 frames per second right there for a second. So I could probably even uh, tweak these settings more and uh, you know, get down to close to 60 with even better image quality. But it uh, really gives you an example here of just the tremendous difference you'll get in having an external GPU connected versus whatever your laptop has built into it. Now, a lot of folks were curious about virtual reality and whether or not this will support things like the Oculus or the HTC Vive. And I'm running right now the uh, Steam VR test to see if the computer is VR capable. And typically you want to see frame rates around 90 frames per second at a minimum in this test. And as you can see here, we're doing uh, well above that. So I think as a VR machine uh, with the external GPU, uh, you will be able to do that. You certainly couldn't do this with the laptop on its own. Even in laptops with GPUs like my fancy Mac uh, are not VR are capable, but if you plug this eGPU in, uh, you suddenly will be, which is pretty remarkable. So there you have it, the Akidio node with a GTX 1070 card installed, and I'm not seeing any performance degradation of this NVIDIA GPU uh, plugged in via this configuration versus what we saw hooked up in a desktop environment on a motherboard. It's really running just as well, which is pretty darn remarkable. Now that is with uh, this Y720 and that MacBook Pro 2016. Remember, go to eGPU.io and do your research on what you have before you buy because everyone's experience might be a little different here depending on how your hardware manufacturer decided to configure everything on your computer. Now the next question is why would you do this if you could probably build a gaming PC with the same GPU for a lot less money and you can certainly do that. There's certainly uh, money to be saved by building a large desktop PC and uh, foregoing the whole laptop equation to begin with but a lot of folks don't have the room. A lot of folks just want a single computer uh, and in my case I actually see this as a way of uh, adding an additional workstation to my editing suite here when I add some more help on the channel because I can take a laptop I already have and dramatically boost its graphics performance. And that is, of course, once Apple begins supporting NVIDIA cards on my uh, editing software. So there is some reason perhaps to look at something like this. And again, if you've got a little laptop and you're not happy with its gaming performance, a couple hundred bucks here, 279 for the uh, case, and then whatever you spend on your GPU will dramatically improve your performance with uh, very little aggravation insofar as getting everything hooked up. So I'm really quite pleased with how all of this went. Now, there are a bunch of other eGPU enclosures out there. Uh, from what I'm reading, this one is probably the best one at the moment, just in the sense that it works, uh, and it works exceptionally well, and it's got the room to accommodate large cards. There are smaller ones out there. There are some that will have the GPU already built into it, uh, but my suggestion would be uh, buy this box. It's the least expensive one out there, at least that I could find, and uh, pick your favorite GPU and stick it in there. It'll work with AMD GPUs also, and again, I think this will actually uh, work with capture cards and other PCs. CI Express boxes too. Now we're going to do some follow-ups on this, uh, namely we'll do some Mac stuff with it if I can find some really good things to demonstrate, but I also want to hear your thoughts and things you'd like for me to check out with this configuration moving forward, so let me know down in the comments below. This is Lon Seib and thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters Mark Bollinger, Brian Miller, Mr. Morse, and Cody Falk. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.